I'm in Bergen to be specific and it's like 7 almost 8 p.m. here and it's still quite bright outside because it is summer yeah you see you see all my crap everywhere but yeah basically this is my room and I got like a nice little window and just look at this view dude can you see that mountains and like cool looking houses you guys are gonna come along with me this week as I do some writing um, in this mess of crap on my desk you can see I've got maybe this looks familiar if you've checked out some of my past videos but I've got both halves of my manuscript in there and then my notebook and like writing tools and stuff so I'm gonna hope to work on that a little bit like continue my line editing and then I'm going to do a bunch of traveling so not just a writing retreat but like a wanderlust retreat you know wandering and writing all in one <laughs> morning to you it is Saturday morning and it's like 11 a.m. and I haven't left yet I slept in a little bit till like 9 a.m. because I was super tired I think I went to bed at 8 something and I didn't wake up until 5 I'm waiting for my phone to finish charging and now it's at 99% I didn't want to leave here without a hundred percent battery so I decided since I was done getting ready and I already ate breakfast I would just write and or edit and so I'm editing right now I'm on page 228 of 543 as you can see this is all that I've edited and this is what I have left to edit for the first half of the manuscript. And then the other half is over there. market and like those if you look up a picture of Bergen online like one of the images that is guaranteed to come up is like the fish market and these buildings next to it which are like red and yellow buildings and I went inside and it's basically a bunch of souvenir shops so I literally went to every single one <laughs> one thing I did see that I bought I just couldn't resist because I saw it and I'm like oh my gosh this is this is exactly like what my character would wear <laughs> um, you should know that what my story storm cloud takes place well a lot of it takes place in Norway not this part of Norway but on um, a different part of Norway but I saw these socks and I'm like oh my gosh she would wear something like this <laughs> and they say Norway on <laughs> another thing I did today is I went to the tourist center to pick up my tickets for one of my excursions that I already paid for I just had to pick up the tickets uh, it's called Norway in the nutshell so these are the tickets. This is the brochure that he gave me. Five tickets. One of them is for the overall excursion and then the rest of them is like, there's a, let's see. So we have a train ticket from Bergen to Voss, which I think is like an hour and some change. And then we have a bus ticket from Voss to Gudvangen. <laughs> and then a boat from Gudvangen to Flam, 
which is there's going to be a town there that you get to spend a couple hours in and like walk around and see whatever the town has to offer. And then you have a train from Flam to Myrtle. And then you have another train from Myrtle back to Bergen. So it's an all day thing. I leave at like 8.43 in the morning and then I come back here at like 7.55 at night. It's going to be a long day. You got to be careful not to miss anything or else your, your whole day is screwed. I'm so happy. Can I just say that I'm in Norway, I'm wearing purple socks with this pattern that my Airbnb host just told me is an eight, oh crap, what was it, an eight bladed rose, that's what she called it, I thought it was a snowflake, but it's an eight bladed rose, and I'm eating fisk soup, which is fish soup, and I'm basically my main character race right now because... I literally referenced this exact food when I was writing my story and then I saw it in the grocery store and I'm like, I am getting that. Hey, it's Sunday morning, September 2nd, and it's like 9 a.m. And it occurred to me this morning as I was preparing my large bowl of oatmeal um, that this is the furthest I've ever been from both of my parents at the same time. Normally I'm very far from one, like half, literally half the, across the world from one parent but very close to the other or vice versa but on this trip I'm about halfway between both. <laughs> so yeah like my mom is six time zones behind and my dad is seven time zones ahead anyway today i plan to hike mount ulrican and i'll bring you along and it's not a long hike it's like an hour you know very touristy but i am zip lining today at the top of mount ulrican so i have to first figure out how to get to the base <laughs> waiting for the bus Hiking Mount Oregon. folks I'm so tired <laughs> it's Sunday and it's 4 p.m. and I'm tired because I just hiked this mountain and it was worse than I thought it was going to be <laughs> like I thought it was gonna be like a real leisurely hike you know some hills but also like a lot of flatter elevations and it would alternate because you know mother nature is real kind to us human beings and all that good stuff I think it took me like an hour and a half to hike it and about a third of the way up it was just literally stairs like not even like actual stairs like they took a bunch of stones and like laid them out like this giant staircase leading up the mountain I swear I felt like I was climbing um, the Empire State Building <laughs> there was all kinds of like little kids and dogs and stuff and I'm like like babies and I'm like my goodness <laughs> like these Norwegians are maniacs <laughs> in a good way but like it just like they're they're real tough with nature you know what I mean whereas me uh, was the American struggling like once I started to approach the top it got so steep that they had to put a railing there and the railing wasn't even like like you 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 hold, you hold on to it and it like moves and I'm like what the heck a railing is not supposed to move so like it wasn't secured down all the way like one of the concrete steps had just broken off and was just laying over there on the side and I'm like well that's not a good sign people were kind of going on either side of the railing I have a slight fear of heights I, it's one of those things that like I don't want to let this fear of heights kind of keep me from doing things that I want to do. Way back when my dad lived in Hawaii, um, there's this, there's, there's like this uh, dormant volcano or extinct volcano or something from out of Diamond Head and people hike that and me and my dad went there and it was like an hour before the park was going to close and we got halfway up and I just looked down or something and I just started crying because I was just so terrified and I could not get go any higher 
and so we only got halfway and then we went back down this must have been like five or six years ago and ever since then I've been I regretted it like I wish I could have just gone up to the top it was one of those things where like I was fine I just got in my head too much which is like typical Sydney I'm always in my head but like ever since then I've like if I've traveled somewhere I usually try to find like something to kind of compensate for the fact or make up for the fact that I'd never climbed that mountain and again it's like not a huge thing it's not a huge mountain it's like something you can do like an hour or two but it was like for me I just couldn't go any further and so last about a year ago last summer I was in Portland and so I took the bus down to Multnomah Falls it's a waterfall and it's like again it's another like hour type hike and it's like just uphill back and forth zigzags and once I got to the top of that and you look down to the waterfall and you see the tiny little parking lot way on the distance I just felt like I felt like I made up for Diamond Head you know and so I thought that Mount Ulrichen was going to be similar to that. And it was so much more treacherous. A lot of the times I kind of step aside if somebody wants to go by in either direction. Just so I'm not in their way and they're not in my way and they're not too close to me. Because I just got like, and I was just like standing there leaning against the mountain. And I was just like, like, like I could feel the panic wanting to come on. But there's this phrase that I wrote in Pitchfork. If something wants to feed on your fear, all the better to let it starve. Anytime she's feeling afraid of something, she thinks of this this quote that someone told her. I felt the essence of that quote in that moment, like, now is not the time to be afraid because if I start panicking, then it's only going to make the situation worse. Like, I cannot be here on the mountainside looking down at the view, which I really didn't even want to see the view at that point because I didn't feel like I was on stable enough ground. But... I can't be here panicking because it's only going to make the situation worse and so basically I put the thoughts out of my mind I didn't let myself think about how terrible it was going to be I just kind of had to psych myself up like I'm almost there just like look how close you are you're right there at the top you know just just a few more stairs and you're there or I would let some people go by and I'm like okay let me see how they climb this part so I can kind of mirror that there are sheep It was so freaking windy. That's the other thing. Like, it was really windy today. So, oh, I was supposed to do the zip line, and I got an email while I was trying to figure out which bus to take that my zip line got canceled because it was too windy. And I wasn't even mad about the zip line. <laughs> like, maybe I should be, but I think I just didn't have the capacity to think about that right now or at the moment. And so I'm like, I'm still gonna hike that mountain. And so I eventually got up there, and then all this stuff ensued. But yeah, once I got to the top of the mountain, I, it was so windy that I just felt like the mount I felt like the wind could blow me off the mountain. I didn't feel, you know, my jackets like flopping around and everything and I just didn't feel stable at all. And I'm like, oh lord, I'm gonna put my foot down on one of these rocks and it's gonna go tumbling and I just kept picturing myself falling in all these gruesome ways. <laughs> So at the top of the mountain, there's supposed to be a cable car, you know, that it's an alternative to the hiking, and there's a restaurant, and there's a gift shop. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to sit down at this restaurant, and I'm going to eat something because I was hungry, or I was starting to get hungry. Use the bathroom, and just kind of calm my mind. And then I'm taking the cable car down because I'm not about to go back down this hill over these exact same treacherous terrains going down where the chance of falling is like so much worse. Um, yeah, and then everything was closed. I sat there blowing my nose every five seconds because there was so much wind. And then I accidentally yanked out my nose ring. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I don't want to know that. And so I had to find it. I'm like, it fell out on the ground somewhere and I couldn't find it. Eventually I found it. But um, yeah, so she's back. Um... And then I had to hike the mountain all the way back down. I just want to change into my pajamas and lay down and do absolutely nothing for like two hours because I'm so tired. I'm curious how many calories I burned, so I'm going to go look that up. I might do some editing tonight. I don't think I'll be leaving the Airbnb for the rest of the day, which is fine because it's 4 o'clock and I'm super tired. So, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Let it go for nobody.
<laughs> Hi, so it's like 9, oh, 10 p.m. or something, Sunday night, and I am about to continue editing this. I took a break earlier to go shower and call my mom and stuff, and so I would call my dad, but it's like 3 o'clock in the morning where he is. As I dive into the rest of my edits, I am on page 250, and I'm basically about at the halfway point. So I'm on chapter 32 and there are 63 chapters. There were 65, but I cut two of them. Um, and at the halfway point, I thought it'd be kind of good to reassess a little bit kind of where I am and how I feel about line editing. I would like to do a whole nother video on like lessons learned from line editing because as I've been thinking about stuff, I've been writing them down. Just generally, um, I like it. I like what... I like how you can actually see the content changing and improving and you you look at your story afterwards and it just seems so much better and as an overwriter it feels so good to cut a bunch of fat from the story like it feels so good to trim that away and then you, what you're left with is something that's more concise something that gets the point across a lot better something that you know like I think I always think about um, Captain America Winter Soldier with this because it's like a lot of stuff happens but the scenes, some of the scenes are like really short, some of the scenes are a bit longer. But like, the way that it happens is like, it's like, whoa, like it, it goes so fast. It doesn't feel like you're watching a two and a half hour movie. It feels like it's shorter because like the entire time something is happening. And they get in the scene, they do what they need to do and they get out. Like they don't linger in the scene. They don't fl like flail about and do things that are like kind of relatively unnecessary for the plot. They get in, they do what they need to do and they get out. Um, and so that's kind of like what I'm doing with my story because... It's similar in that there's a lot of stuff that happens and I'm trying to make it so they get in, they get out. But also just that, you know, I don't spend too much time explaining things that aren't necessary. A lot of what I've been cutting are parts of scenes where I talk about, where I have the characters talk about something that's not relevant, that's not immediately relevant. Like if they're going to talk about an aspect of the plot, then that aspect of the plot better be happening right now or about to happen in the next scene. But they're talking about things that you know, may, sometimes may never, may not come up for the rest of the story, or it may not come up for several chapters, and so I'll basically strike that reference. If it's, imp if it's an important detail, I'll move it later, but if they're just, like, kind of talking about stuff that the reader already knows, and there's no point in, like, talking about it, so I'm scratching a lot of that as well. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I really like line editing. It's just very tedious, and it helps to do it, I think, when you're not on a time crunch like I was in August because <laughs> it's now September uh, my grandma's birthday is in six days but anyway she's turning 92 she's such a beautiful lady um what was I talking about oh yeah it's nice it's nice to do line editing when you're not on the time crunch because because it's such a tedious task it's good to take breaks and stuff so like do one or two chapters a day for example depending on how long your chapters are and then take a break do something else um, and read obviously you read a lot but more on that in my line editing lessons learned video but um that way you don't burn yourself out too quickly you don't get mentally drained quickly and I think it also helps if you've not read the chapters either you've not read the chapters recently or you've not read them very often like yeah you'll like line editing is one of the last steps in the editing in revising your book so you'll have probably read the book a few times before then but that's why it's good if you can and if you have the time to get some distance before you dive into line editing that way you can actually see the words as words and not just you can see the words as words that need to be fixed and not just as words that they look okay like everything's fine I don't need to change anything like you don't want to go into line editing and not change anything that defeats the purpose and chances are you do need to change something maybe you're just too close to see it and therefore need more time but um yeah so those are kind of my general thoughts on line editing at the halfway point I can't wait to be done I am so looking forward to plotting book two so I'm gonna try to edit one more chapter tonight it's actually gonna it's one of my favorite chapters in the book because I love the way I've written it it's such a colorful scene it features a character that I really love <laughs> I think I talked about this in my editing 24-hour edit-a-thon it's the character who comes on the page and he just shines um, if I do say so myself <laughs> and also quite literally because he wears a lot of gold <laughs>
Monday evening. It's like 8.30 or something. I bought a Norway sticker. I got it for my laptop. See, there's Germany and there's Japan. So now we're gonna add, I'm gonna remove this sticker if I can remove it. Oh Lord, it's been on there so long, it's probably like fused on by now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it left the huge like sticky imprint. <laughs> so awkward. Maritime Museum just wanted to point out the fact that that little tower at the top of that mountain is where I climbed to the other day Okay, just so for some perspective Okay, now look at that. Look at that. That's 2,000 feet high My legs are still hurting from it I tried whale for the first time today and it was interesting <laughs> I wasn't planning on trying it at all because it just didn't really appeal to me and I'm I'm super picky with food so it's like really hard to try new things sometimes especially things like whale but I was talking to my dad this morning and he was like yeah you should go try whale like you're never like whale is just not a thing you know that I've come across ever so while I'm here might as well try this thing like that's what I'm here for right to try new experiences otherwise I might as well have just stayed home and so I tried it I went to the fish market I was walking like this because the sun was in my eyes even though I had sunglasses on and the guy behind the counter was like is the sunglasses not enough for you <laughs> and so then I was like then like he let me try some samples of stuff like I tried this crab and it was so good oh my gosh <laughs> and then I was like actually can I can I try a whale I've never had that before so I tried it and first of all whale for some reason looks like charcoal and like the like the meat's just really really dark and it kind of looks like beef like the way he was cutting it and of course never having tried whale before I'm like thinking that this is gonna be really chewy and it's gonna have a lot of extra like blubbery fat it actually tasted a lot like smoked salmon <laughs> which like maybe that's partly because of the way that they cooked it in terms of the texture it was like like regular meat like it wasn't anything like strange or unusual but it was pretty good so yeah I'd recommend that to a friend and then I went to the bakery let me show you my bakery haul <laughs> who does a bakery haul anyway so the first thing that I got and mind you I don't know the name of this thing I just know that it has rum in it <laughs> which is so funny because I don't drink alcohol but it won't be the first time I've had a rum dessert so it's this thingy ah Sorry, camera's about to fall. Oh my god, it smells really good. But like you see it, it's got like, oh, she said it had like a rum filling or something in it. And so yeah, it's got this, I'm guessing that's raspberry. No. I don't know what that is, but it's good. It's really good. And the other thing that I got, if it's not messed up, ooh, it's still very pretty. Do you see it? 
Are you looking at it? Okay, yeah. So there's that. Now, okay. If you check out my my writing retreat video, you know, I talked about how I grew up in Germany for a few years. And one of the things about Germany um, is that they have marzipan at this one... There was this one place that we kept going to. It was like a town or something. But they had marzipan. And I guess marzipan is like an Italian thing. But I only know it from Germany. And so I saw, the, I saw this thing called marzipan cake. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to come all the way to Norway for some marzipan. So today was my last day in Norway. I went and bought some souvenirs. So I got this hoodie, which is my favorite color. And I got, what else did I buy? So it's like a little Viking ship. But it's also a candle holder. And it had me thinking about like Viking funerals. Which like, from what I know about it, it's like, you know, when somebody dies, they put their body on like a boat. I guess kind of like this. Um, and they set it on fire and then set it sail out to sea. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, if not a bit cultural appropriation-ish. I thought these buildings are really cool looking and I wanted to get something to remember them by. My flight leaves in like nine or like in 11 and a half hours. It leaves at 6.30 in the morning. So I have a taxi coming to pick me up at like 2.45 in the morning to take me to the bus stop. Because I already paid for my bus ticket. And then the bus, the airport bus is going to take me to the airport at like 3.25 I think it comes. It's been really fun. I've had such a good time here. I can't wait to come back. You know, I really feel like I could live here or something. <laughs> I feel like I should do some kind of recap with my what I accomplished with writing. Hold on a second. Got my two manuscripts. So the first one, I edited. The first bind up goes from the beginning to page 280. And I started this trip at page 231. So about 50 pages in the first bind up. And I finished that. I just have to implement the last two chapters edits into my Word doc. And then the other, then I started my second bind up. Oops, something just fell. Then I started my second bind up. And I am about to start page 298. So I've done about not very much like 18 pages and the next thing I have to do is chapter 38 so I just have to also implement those chapters into my manuscript so I actually haven't really honestly accomplished a whole lot with editing but I did do at least a little bit every day and it doesn't feel like a waste or anything to me I still feel pretty good about it and I'm happy and it's hard to actually write or work on my story when I'm traveling because like there's so much else going on but I talked about that a lot more in my writing retreat video which I just filmed so I will link that down below anyway thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this journey it's been so much fun I can't wait to do something like this again it's a great country fjords mountains vikings fish <laughs> soup that's all I got for Norway. Give this video a like for more writing retreat, travel vlog type stuff to come eventually in the future when I can afford to do this again. Um, hit subscribe for more writing videos in general to come. And I will see you next time in the United States. Toodaloo! It's 3 a.m. in Bergen. This is exactly like Iceland. I said I wasn't going to do this again, but... Oh well. The bus comes in 30 minutes, so... That's a long time. Winter's night, I saw just a burning light in the snow. Keep me warm, shelter me from the storm.